Here's a place where all of us can be safe. Our stories of transformation can be safe, and all the things we want to research are safe here. This is Safe Space with Cheyenne. I'm really excited you're here, and I hope you stick around for a while, because I've got a lot to show you before I leave Earth. I love you guys. Hello, all my friends. Y'all been asking about mushrooms and psychedelics and expanding consciousness, and I can't say that I've searched high and low, but I asked for it and it was received. So let's just call it a manifested guest in front of my face today. I have Mishu <laughs> Oliveira. She is a psychedelic integration therapist. And I mean, honestly, if you just check out all of her reviews of all the things she's been working and guiding people through, she is a godsend for lack of a better term for these people. We have had to reschedule our appointment several times because she has been called to work with the medicine with other people or people have needed yes. her and she has just stepped up to her higher power and I got I to gotta interview. I got to hear all about this. I am completely blind from what I know from your website and all the reviews I've read. So I'm so thankful that we are finally sitting in front of each other today so I can not only hear your story but hear about this amazing medicine ceremony guided shamanic experience however you want to categorize it thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to talk with me you're very welcome thank you so much for having me and for your patience in my rescheduling consistently over this last uh, month and a half or so <laughs> we've been trying to meet um my name is Misha Oliveira um my title is kind of loose I do guide journeys I guess I'm a psychedelic guide I'm also cultivating um, mentorships with people looking to be guides. I'm also doing a lot of integration work. I'm also doing a lot of cultivating of medicine also and educating people around uh, how to safely and effectively cultivate their own medicine. Um, I'm definitely helping people to expand their consciousness with this medicine in ways that are very intentional and very deliberate over a series of months. Um, so you can say that I am a shepherd of mushrooms in all aspects and I am honored to walk this path and to offer um, these gifts to people who seek themselves with this. So, Every thank time you for I having talk me. to you, thank you so much for coming on. I feel the same way. I love connecting yeah. with you. This is the I've <laughs> talked to you through Messenger a couple times. I feel your good vibes when I talk to you through Messenger. Then when I get to even see you over Zoom, your like just like your aura, <laughs> your energy, everything about you. I'm so inquisitive. <laughs> <laughs> about how you like maintain this high vibe and obviously like let's give it up to finding mushrooms and what was it 2018 is when you took your first dose so that was the reconnection yeah that was re reconnecting 2018 in january yeah 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 that's a monumental moment for you huge you, actually yeah that changed my life i had no idea <laughs> I had no idea what was coming, <laughs> like none whatsoever, actually. But um, I'm glad that I had the, the courage and the curiosity to go forward, you know, and explore. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I'm definitely going to back up before 2018, but my curiosity is making me ask this question right now. Um, when sure, you, sure. When you took the mushrooms in January of 2018, was it more of like a recreational, hey, let's just do this, guys, let's have fun? And then yeah. you ended up just being Definitely. taken on a whole different journey instead. What happened was that when I took them, what I got from them was a really nice connection to my heart. And after being somebody who drank pretty extensively and compulsively for about 38, 39 years, um, it was a really nice break from feeling drunk and numb all the time. And so what I liked was that the day after this, I took three point, about four grams, I think, of golden teachers, right? Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. And I didn't go off into outer space, but I connected to myself in a really real way. And it felt the next day and then the next few weeks afterwards, I felt solid in myself and my intuition and my ability for psychic awareness was through the roof and so that was amusing to me that was really fun and so i thought i had the awareness a few weeks later that i need to do this once a month basically i need to make a day that i take for myself for a self-care day and i just drop in with mushrooms and i had at the time a really great supply and i was like okay i'm just gonna go ahead 
and do this. And it was for not just for fun, but to recover myself. I didn't have intentions, though. I wasn't looking for anything or solving anything. I just liked the way I felt during and afterwards. It felt powerful and it felt uh, welcoming to come. I felt like I was coming home to myself in a way that I hadn't felt like that forever, maybe since I was a kid, maybe. And it just felt familiar and it felt awesome. And so I kept doing that. And a lot of wild things unfolded after the fact of that. And yeah, you're welcome to, we can get to that down the line. But yeah, in a nutshell, that's so then yeah, let's, let's fun. back up to, mm -hmm. let's go back to who you were unconsciously asleep, addictions, like what were, what were, who, how do I even say it? Like, who were you? You know, who were you before you had this experience? <laughs> not this. And, yeah, and you got <laughs> to give yourself person. a lot of grace when you Not this, this woman right here. Not this woman. Because I was somebody who for the bulk of my life prized and prioritized my um i guess my value by my appearance and i had nothing on the inside other than i mean i was always wise and i was always knowing so i had clear knowing i had understanding i always felt i don't know i always felt that that there was i, I, I was lacking a lot and alcohol was kind of like a weird like a gross way to like kind of give myself more and make up for what I didn't have. And so I really prioritized my appearance by going to the gym, getting big muscles, getting giant tattoos, like doing all these things to really, you know, accentuate my outside and really not having anything to do with my inside at all whatsoever. So I was really shallow and I really prioritized shallow experiences with people. Um, I really ran for myself. I was a runner. Um, and for most of my life, I ran away from the fact that I saw and knew way more than I wanted to. That felt like too much responsibility for me, quite frankly. I didn't want to take that on. I didn't want to let people down. Um, I didn't want to be a fake or a fraud or a phony. So I ran from even when I was 13. Knowing what I knew and seeing what I saw, I didn't want any part of that. So I was a runner. I ran away from all the things that were hard, that were scary, that were shameful. Um, and that's what I was for a really long time. And mushrooms... Um, reminded me that I was not any of those things actually and that you can forgive and move through um, and continue to evolve yourself past things that really cut you down to a place of feeling that you don't deserve to be here because most of my life I felt because I look like this as a girl I certainly don't deserve to be here because I don't look like everybody else right so that's a problem <laughs> in 1970 and 1980 that's a problem for me I had a lot of violence in my life I had a lot of um trauma or PTSD um, along with my addictions. So I was, um, I was a person who was a very, um, I was a very angry person and I was very shame, ashamed of myself, of my, every part of myself basically. So I, so I leaned on my parents and had lots of um, activities that were really not in the best presence of my self-respect, self-love and self-care. And, um, you know, looking back, I don't really regret these times, but I'm clear in my mind of seeing what I was and how I was behaving in them, though. So it's very, uh, for me, it's it's interesting to look back and to see and to watch what happened and watch the progression of um, there were some powerful things that came through that really had massive effect on changing my entire life, like literally. And really big in ways that I'm still, I mean, three years later, I'm still recovering from some of those and still learning to articulate um, exactly what happened and exactly what I do with people in mushroom space and out of it and what I'm doing with them in the community building aspects and everything else. So um, I was not this person uh, almost six years ago. And I owe that to mushrooms entirely and psychedelics in general, mm -hmm. mostly mushrooms, a little bit of LSD, but yeah, mushrooms for sure. Mushrooms for sure. So I'm curious when you started going through the unraveling process, especially after your first psychedelic experience in January 2018, were you able to like get almost like an eagle eye, higher perspective on like understanding why you acted the way you acted and you did the things that you did? Like, did they? I began to. Yeah. I began to because when you're doing you? a macro, yeah, the macro dose is like a, you're blowing your consciousness open for a moment in that big dose space. And so you're getting brought to a lot of awareness. And then in those months, you know, the weeks that follow, the next few, three, you know, three or so weeks, you're still very much aware of what's happening, but you you don't know the language yet. So you're still, and I didn't know anybody. This was 2018. This wasn't even happening in the internet. 
no one was doing this. So I'm sharing this on Instagram and Facebook, all my social media. I'm not even on LinkedIn because I'm not even in the, in the business world like that or any of that stuff. So I'm just, I am blown away that this is happening and I'm feeling like it needs to be shared because I'm feeling, for no other reason, I'm just astounded that this is even happening. So here, I have a small following because I am a butch woman who prioritizes staying female and being this, right? Because I pass as a male, especially now that I have my surgery on my chest, thank all the deities above to make that happen. Thank the universe, thank myself. But <laughs> when you are doing this work for the first time and you don't have someone to help you, you are going to take a while to put the pieces together of what this means for you and what this means for your, yourself as you've been up to this point, right? So I didn't have someone to help me one-on-one, -on -one, but I did have lectures from Alan Watts and Ron Doss that people from the internet that I did not know that were just popping into my inbox to say, hey, I'm following you. You had a spiritual awakening. You need to listen to this guy. You need to go read this. Oh, here, let me send you this book. Let me put you here. Here's this link. And so I was just like, do, 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 listening. I don't know whose people I've ever heard of any of them, any of these people until this time. And I, I hear them speaking, and it's this is how I'm thinking now. So it makes sense. It's happening, and I'm starting to put these pieces together. It's almost five and a half years of this work that I am now able to really understand, like, like, tangibly understand and to speak to what I'm able to do with people in this space. And it's really wild. So, um, yeah, it took a while. It's still, it's still, I'm still doing this work. I'm still digesting. I'm still integrating. I think It'll, there's all, it's the constant. rest of my life. I think that's the thing. I think the red flags you should look for in this industry is when you find the people that say one, that they're living out of 5d all the time, um, they finished their spiritual journey. They're enlightened. Are <laughs> you never finishing that? Are you yes, alive? but there are people <laughs> out there that market themselves this way. Like they're like, oh, I've done it all. And now I'm here to be a physical guide on earth. I'm like, that's not how this works. You don't get to get out of your soul contract just because you took some mushrooms. I know that there is right. a temporary no, ego death that, work is that still happens alive well. a lot. <laughs> So were you, yeah. did you experience the temporary ego death before you got into like even Carl Jungsworth with um, the, yin and yeah. the, the yin and the yang, the anima and the animus type talk, the balancing of the masculine and feminine, so to speak. But when you experience the ego death, is that where you really were able to like feel your heart space open for the first time? Honestly, the first time I felt the heart, my heart space open, like really like blow wide open was was a few months before my spiritual awakening. I started having these 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 journeys, these mushroom trips that I felt were I thought these were like, oh I'm, I'm on almost five grams of mushrooms. This is part of the mushroom trip. But what I'm realizing now, after it's been a few years now, these were visions of my future that I was having. I didn't realize that <laughs> until now, 2020, 2021, all these things that now have happened and I have lived them. Um, that was the beginning of me starting to get into some deeper space with this. And the ego death didn't happen until the spiritual awakening. And that was, um, it was really difficult. My identity was taken from me. And I spent most of the rest of 2019 and then the rest of 2020 during the pandemic coming out of homelessness, going into an unfinished basement in, in Massachusetts in the winter putting these pieces together and really trying to understand who I was. It was a very difficult time. But it was also, ironically, what it was almost exactly what I needed to do the work to become and understand who I was and what I was meant to do here now. And it made sense for me to just, I mean, I was put into a position of prioritizing my survival by the very fact that I was you know, coming out of homelessness and coming through trying to you know having healing from surgery for my right shoulder rebuilding myself in, on a very minuscule level and prioritizing every bit of my waking time to understanding what the hell happened to me and learning and reading everything i get my hands on and understanding and making creating my business like i was shown that millions of people are coming i saw collective suffering of millions 
coming to do this with mushrooms and not about this isn't about me this is about people seeking access for real to help themselves not for your depression and anxiety nah that's the tip of the iceberg right that's nothing this is consciousness expanding medicine of the earth and you're going to evolve yourself beyond your wildest imaginations it's a good idea to have somebody who's walk that path before right so i'm here to help people either step into that space by taking mushrooms consistently over several months right to do that or to teach them how to help people do that you know themselves that's the harder part though if you haven't done this how how, how are you teaching other people to do it right from a certificate from a course you gotta speak the language you have to have gone to the moon not just read about it right mm-hmm you have to live there for a while, live there for a minute, right? And taking time to grow yourself and to know who and what, how you are, right? Mm-hmm. To know when people are in mushroom space or coming out of psychedelic space to understand how to help them work through and apply their being, you know, what they've been shown to them. So, yeah, tricky stuff. It's taken me, I'm still doing this work. I'm still evolving. We all are still evolving here if you're doing any of this. If you're even dabbling any part of this kind of work, you're evolving forever, right? Until you stop. I love that you were talking about how curing your depression and anxiety is just the tip of the iceberg of what you're doing and capable of doing with plant medicine, whether it's mushrooms all the way to like ayahuasca, combo, rape. I would never do work with ayahuasca. Um, I work with LSD. I work with, I'm starting to work with MDMA. I'm, also, I'm just I my my focus has been mushrooms extensively for over five and a half years now on myself and with many clients. Now I I've, I've sat with my 94th person um, as just a person to be sitting with, and they're in a mushroom space. Paying clients I think is up to 62 now, so it's exciting. Well, it's a, it's been so fast and so MDMA. They Sorry. Keep, MDMA is ecstasy, of Molly. Yeah, but what it's made a, you want to start working with it from a facilitating people, standpoint? I've I've sat with people who prefer to take some of that while they take mushrooms, large amounts of mushrooms. Sometimes the come up is very difficult for them, and what the what this does is it softens their experience with that come up. It also opens them, and some of my clients are very resistant. They're very love phobic, right? of themselves and of other people trying to love them as well. And so they're very resistant to what the mushrooms are trying to do. They're wanting to open you. And if you're someone who's walled off, forget about it. It's not happening for you. So if you take a little bit of MDMA, along with five grams of really potent mushrooms, you're going to open your heart. (laughs) You're You're going to be opening and working through what's keeping you from having that experience in your life on a daily basis, right? So... It's important to understand people that you're working with, where they are with where their limitations are for coming into this work and work with that, right? Like figure out a way to access what's comfortable for them to help them come home, right? It's all about that in in the end, so. Yeah, that's very interesting. I've never heard that. It's funny that you brought that up today, though. My friend sent me a clip of a stand-up comedian in his 30s who talked about how he just got into MDMA. And he says, do you know what MDMA stands for? He said, mmm, damn, Molly's awesome. And the whole crowd just erupted. And I was like, like, well, it really does trigger something in your serotonin levels. And it really does open your heart up. It it does. I know that most people think of it as a party drug and like, let's go to a show and take it. And then, you know, let's nurse ourselves back to health the next Uh, few days. They have I have had some so much now. mind expanding experiences on MDMA where I've went home afterwards and I've just journaled or meditated or just tried to get it out because I felt like literally like I'm so open and not like I can be infiltrated open, just my channels are open. Let's yeah, get all slow, this out. Flowing. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, flowing. Yeah. Let's That's get beautiful. all this out that needs to get yeah. out. So yeah. I've experienced like the medicinal side of MDMA. So I'm glad that you brought that up that yeah. you're still like you treat it therapeutically. Um so Absolutely. more questions. Absolutely. LSD. Yeah. So do you mix LSD and mushrooms or are we just picking one or the other there? No, 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 no. I personally don't. Um, I don't suggest that people do that if if they're trying to 
reach a p- place of peace within mm. to have an experience that's kind of out outer limits go ahead and explore yourself if you're an experienced psychonaut and that's something that is curious and interesting to you mm-hmm. go do your thing right i'm not pushing this on anybody what i do with people in lsd is i make lsd tinctures with a little bit of distilled water very nice high quality lsd that's been tested and verified all the things right and it's able to be ingested in much smaller amounts that have really phenomenal phenomenal it's just, I mean, what you're getting from microdosing LSD is more energy. Your flow state is laser. You have an analgesic, basically, effect with LSD more so than mushrooms. I mean, the synthetic aspect, I think they're still doing research, or they're starting to do research around why, but it's really phenomenal for pain relief. And it's just, it's overall, I find microdosing LSD to be a little bit more enjoyable. Mushrooms and LSD, um, I find mushrooms to be a macrodosing medicine for me more than microdosing i've tried it it mostly irritates me it doesn't get me in enough to do the work that i need to do um and if i want to alter myself in a small way lsd is perfect for that i get a lot done i feel uh, i feel great <laughs> it's, it's awesome yeah it's awesome <laughs> so what are the like integration tips that you help people like let's break this down right so let's do a beginner like a beginner is just starting they haven't Mm-hmm. They haven't had heart expansion, spiritual awakening, ego death. They're just curious. They've tried everything modern medicine can div- give them. They've seen the psychedelic mm-hmm. movement come up in a very um, controlled environment. They're not looking at it from a recreational. It's 100% medicinal for them. They come, you serve the medicine to them, mushrooms, whatever you'd like to call it, and they need integration tips because obviously there's a chance of destabilization base, like on a case to case basis. Is that true? Um, I wouldn't say destabilization. I would say more that it's uh, a very subtle shift in belief systems Mm -hmm. or in um, processing um, emotional response kind of thing. It's very subtle. And a lot of people, what I'm actually working with the most, which is this is very ironic and also kind of kind of a sad thing that I'm, I'm noticing, what I work mostly with people in integration is the unfortunate destination addiction that everyone is having with this movement and seeking someone else's experience that they're reading about. That is what's happening with people constantly seeking this work. I'm helping them integrate from what they didn't get that they were looking for and now they're disappointed about. So... It's, very, it's becoming very clear to me that there needs to be more education about what this is about. And it's not being, it's not being done in a way that people are understanding that this is not a magic pill that you take that saves your life and that changes you at the blink of an eye. This is something that with proper guidance and with proper medicine that has adequate potency and also this, a strain that is known for targeting your mental aspects rather than your oculatory aspects, you're going to have responses and reactions and gains from doing this that are going to open you, right? But if you're just microdosing, you can't, you're not going to have awakenings and victories and stuff like that. Now, some people, I will say this, some people that I'm working with have had some interesting things happen, but these are a small percentage. I'm talking, uh, one woman I'm working with, she takes 0.15 of a gram, right? 0.15 of a gram which is nothing. And now she's a haiku master after doing this for seven months. Okay. That's rare and not the norm. <laughs> then there's, there's other people who are taking tiny little minuscule amounts and having good shifts and breakthroughs in behavior. I have one woman, she's agoraphobic. Uh, we've been working together since, I want to say, January, February. Um, she's now leaving her house for the first time in four years after microdosing since February. So she's microdosing small amounts. These are big deals. These are big steps. So certain people who are not resistant, who are more open, this is a medi- she's a medium. So because of her already in- intact spirituality, this medicine is like being, she takes the tiniest amount and it's, it's opening her heart. She's stepping into herself in a way that's confident right now. Other people that are resistant are going to take this medicine. They're going to feel something and they're going to push it. Out. they're going to close it off. <laughs> they're going to do something, right? They're going to pick up the remote. They're going to grab the phone. 
they're going to do something because what's happening is all of a sudden shifting them in a way that feels, eh, maybe this isn't working. Eh, I don't believe in this anyway. I don't want to learn how to do this, whatever. But they're going to all of a sudden take another detour. And so those people are people who benefit from a little bit more. Maybe it's a mezzo dose, a one gram to a gram, maybe two and a half gram dose that you can take on your own with smaller amounts with less potency medicine. They can start to get to know what it feels like to have a little bit of altered state tiny little introduction, right? But not everyone's the same. So it's important to understand what it looks like for various types of people to do this work. Because when they start talking, now I've done this for, you know, I've done this for a while now, and I've worked with enough people now that I'm securing patterns, 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 patterns all across the board with all types of doses now. So now I know what it sounds like when someone who's resistant isn't getting what they need with, the microdose that they're doing. Okay, well, now we're doing a big journey and things are shifting, right? Big things are shifting. Lots of change, lots of breakthroughs coming through with shifting the consciousness or the belief systems or whatever it is that's holding them back that's causing them suffering, right? So So with these people with these belief systems and then these psychic abilities kick on and they're having a direct experience with psychic abilities they're, they're, that may or may not be in their belief system, how do they, are they just like, whoa, it's all real? Or like, give me an example. I don't really want to, I mean, I'm, I'm really big on HIPAA, so to speak, for spirituality and any type of plant medicine, so I don't want to get too deep in anybody. But if you had, obviously, if it's shifting a little bit and they're having third eye visions or activations... Like for me, I had residual effects after my first psychedelic experience, and it was like. What, a, what were they? Um, well, I remember. Oh God, I could ramble. Okay, so let me just let me just <laughs> go back in my mind. I remember I was in a really tough spot, and I just kept getting. I've always been connected to the spirit world, anyways. Like as far as like past mm-hmm. love was and stuff like that. And I just kept yeah. getting this familiar tap, like, I know I'm not doing it right, but I'm extremely lost. I wouldn't admit how, like, severely suicidal and depressed I was. I was, like, the Robin Williams of my friends group. Um, I was always, like, um, running out to help that. everybody. Yeah, yeah you know that. what I mean? So yeah. you're just, they're, yeah. they're just like, oh, you're, you're so strong. You always come and help everybody and do this and do this. And it was always a way to like always get away from myself. Like I never had to sit and be with myself ever and ever. And just like what you said, picking up the remote or doing this or calling the phone, like I always had to be busy, busy, busy doing something. And luckily like I'm a writer, so I'd eventually sit down and write to myself at the end of the night. And that was really the only time that I could be truthful to myself. And I would write in these notebooks about just how like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. I'm going to fucking do it. And there's just no way around it. I, I do not see a path plain and simple. So then, uh, one of my friends, I forget where he's from, but he lives out in Oregon. Now he's just like, you need to do like an eighth of shrooms, dude. And I was like, Oh, I've never done that. Like I've done a bunch of other stuff. He's like, seriously, these things just kind of called to you. And he just threw me an eighth. And a group, it kind of was like a recreational thing, but he pulled me aside and he's like, this is going to help you. He's like, but, you know, we're going to make sure you're safe and you really don't have to worry about anything. So I actually had a sober, not guide, but just a sober person to Mm -hmm. take care of me in a recreational standpoint. That's a sitter. Yeah, it's a sitter. sitter. Yeah. Yeah. So the sitter did as good as he can. By the end of the night, I was, Mm -hmm. we were driving back roads and I was hanging out of the back seat of my window with just like, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Like the hand on, I'm like, oh, Oh, (laughs) I'm alive. Um, Sorry, mom. (laughs) Sorry, dad. Sorry. Sorry. It's all right. No need to apologize for that. No, it's fun because I know they listen and they're going to be like, oh my God, my child. Because like, I would think the same thing if my daughter had a podcast and I had to listen to it. So I'm just like, I love you. I'm sorry that you're here, but you have no idea how much (laughs) this experience saved my life. Um, so like after, after that one, um, I had a great like recreational time is the best way I could say. And I, I hadn't like you, I hadn't been that happy since I was a child. So then I went back to the place that I was staying at at the time and I just started writing everything out by candlelight to a Deftones album. 
<laughs> I love and, the Deftones. That's awesome. I love Deftones. I used to love them, actually. And I can't the listen to them candle, anymore, though, but I used to. The candle was dancing to the beat of every Deftone song that was on there. And I had, I swear, all the answers to the universe. I had, I saw my life path. I had it all figured out. The only trouble was waking up the next day and actually putting it into motion and knowing how to do it. Did I do it? No, because I slammed back down into reality. The mushrooms were off. Integration is not a term that I knew in this year. And I remember sitting and contemplating the next day, just like smoking a cigarette, just like, I was really fucking cool. I could do shrooms like all the time. <laughs> but like, what's the point right, if right. I'm just going to add another drug to the car and I'm really not moving along? Like, what was the fucking point of that? But like right, you, I decided exactly. about every five to yeah. six weeks, I think I'm going to unwind with a bag of shrooms. And I'm just going to explore this consciousness more because that was yeah. the most relief from suffering I had felt in like my whole life. And I want to know ever why <laughs> ever in my life, <laughs> ever in my life. And I want to know why the substance that grows natural, right, yeah. is doing this to me. And it's it's not going to hurt me like all the other things that I was putting in my body. So about six weeks later, I got another one and we decided to go off to this secluded, um, like abandoned farm area that I shouldn't say abandoned, but I'm going to just so nobody fucking knows where I did this. Um, I went with two friends. We parked my car in the middle of a field and we put on a four to five hour playlist basically. We dropped the shrooms at our car and we all went in opposite directions. And we said, if anybody needs anything, run to the car, honk the horn. No matter how far you are into the trip, you run back to the car and we take care of each other. So I saw a tractor off on the horizon and I just started walking towards the tractor as the shrooms started hitting in in the night. And immediately Jesus Christ pops up to my left and starts talking to me. And I'm not shocked by this at all because I talk to him all the time in my car. And mainly because a lot of people in my life just kept thinking, oh, she needs Jesus, she needs Jesus. And I was like, dude, he's right here. We talk all the time. We actually talk about how you judge me all the time, but whatever. So he (laughs) just starts walking with me like down this pasture and I just start talking to him like an old friend, like I've known him my whole life. It's no big fucking deal. The shrooms are about to hit. I'm I'm about to start feeling like this lightness and all this. Uh, Keep in mind, I'm scared of heights. So I climb up to the like engine part of the tractor and I, and I look out and it's almost like I'm having a conversation with God where I'm like, why did you bring me here? Like, I am fucking up. I'm scared of heights right now, and I'm climbing up on a tractor. (laughs) And as I'm saying this, I'm climbing the glass of it, and I'm climbing on top of the tractor. PSA, don't do this, okay? I'm not encouraging this. This is my story. Mm -hmm. But don't recreate it. I'm good on that. So, and I have to say that for (laughs) listeners, because I don't need anybody being like, I heard on a podcast. Like, no, no, this is my experience from the past, and I've healed. And we haven't even got through the full story. (laughs) So I'm like... God, seriously, why did you bring me here? Like, I'm about to give you this life back. And according to the religion that I was raised on, if I kill myself, I'm going to burn in the fiery pits of hell. And I think that if I kill myself, that you should meet me on the other side and go, why did you do it? And I'll tell you why I did it. It's fucked here. I don't get it. I don't know how to fit in. I don't know how to be happy. I don't know how to move forward with my life. Like, I just vented all of this to this ghostly Jesus Christ spirit as I'm speaking up to the sky to God. Now I'm sitting on top of the tractor and I'm not scared of heights anymore. I'm not scared of living. I'm not, I'm just like, I let it go. The wind starts talking to me like I'm in Pocahontas. There's like, you just, you know, the perception change that you have. Like, I'm not like seeing goblins or anything. I'm literally like, I'm one with nature. I'm at peace. I'm starting to get flashbacks of my childhood and how happy I was just playing in the woods, on the farm, playing with plants, being with dogs, all this stuff. And I jumped down off the tractor because I'm now invincible, which is the downside of it. I'm like, oh, I'm alive. Um, And I cut my foot on a rock and I have to walk all the way back to the safe haven spot and honk the horn. (laughs) I did not think I was going to be the one honking the horn. Um, it's like 80 degrees out or something like this. It's a pretty cool night, but still like 80 degrees. And, um, I had to wrap my foot up with a first aid kit and put Ugg boots on and continue the next six hours of the trip, 
which worked out perfectly because like I went through woods, I found a creek, I laid on the grass. The whole time I talked to God and I was like, I'm giving this life back to you. And I'm so sorry if it's a mortal sin. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm tired of disappointing everybody, even myself. Like, I don't know what to do. There's no path ahead of me. Um, I just want to help people. I, I knew that I loved helping people and being there for them in those moments like you are in those journeys. Like in, in the darkest moment of your life when you think nobody could see you, understand you, I fucking got you. And I was really good at that. And I that really helped me into that hero mindset of always going and being with people. But I also thought it was like you're serving people. You're serving humanity. You're serving their hearts. But I was yeah. in a very um less informed version of myself i just knew that i had this passion but i didn't really have the education behind the passion of it so i ended up waking up from that and i realized like i don't have depression it's it's a warning sign that i'm i am doing stuff wrong in my everyday life that i shouldn't be doing i'm coping in ways that i shouldn't be coping and those were the first like greasy gritty ugly layers to pull apart but then when you pull apart and you have to look inside and see yourself, it's fucking terrifying. So I'd be like, ah, oh, we're good. Like, kitty litter that shit. Like, trying to cover up my shit. Like, I didn't do that. Like, I'm not this. Like, I'm not that. And, yeah. you know, those two big experiences were monumental for me. They're the reason that I believe in psychedelics the way that they did. Like, I am a person that I believe was saved from a psychedelic trip. But it's not that I don't still have suicide ideation even to this day. I just understand it's a warning system for me specifically. I'm not saying it's for everybody. But for me, if I have ideation, it like I 100% start auditing all of my habits, my diet, my exercise, my friends group, my journaling, what I'm doing with my life, everything. And it, it's honestly <laughs> exhausting, which I know a lot of people start the self care, work, whatever avenue they go down, they're like, this is so exhausting. Let me just go back to my comfort zone. Like the healing isn't linear in any perspective, but I mean, I want to start microdosing shrooms. I don't have what? the legalities in Kansas or like the steady flow, which is why I haven't um, figured that out, but I definitely know it's in my future. So for people like me that want to get into it, but are obviously waiting for a, um, not necessarily like a legal, but a proper guided, consistent supply, like what would you say for beginners would be the best step to go through? I mean, really ask yourself what you're looking for is number one. That's the most important thing you need to do when you're even contemplating doing anything with mushrooms or psychedelics in general is to Ask yourself, what is it that you're looking for? What's missing? What do you need? And what, how do you view psychedelics as the implement to help you through that, right? Because if you just want to take recreational things and have a recreational experience and have your buddy sit with you and you'll be good to go, and you'll probably miss 80% of what comes through. You won't remember it, kind of like what happened to you. And that's cool. I'm not here to judge people's you know, consumption and the way they choose to explore mind-altered al states right or however they choose to interact with themselves like i don't have any judgment there what i do say though for people who are actually seeking to do something in this space or to have some sort of work addressed right or personal access revealed looking for more going deeper and further you're going to need to work with somebody who has a, a lot of personal experience and professional experience because not just oh i've taken some mushrooms but how do you work with other people in that state what does it look like for you and what, how are you showing up for them? How, my questions there. So it's really important to really vet the person that you're going to work with. Um, ask you, you know, first of all, vet yourself <laughs> to find out, are you just doing this because it's, it's a thing now or do you really need to access yourself? Because I'll tell you right now that not everybody needs to expand their consciousness. Some people, the very fabric of their reality is their glue that holds them together. They don't need that shifted. They don't. And not everyone is meant to awaken in this plane right now. That's okay. Doesn't matter. It's not a contest, right? Some of us didn't ask for this, but we're doing what we were asked to do, right? 
Some of us weren't seeking what we were given, and that's okay too. But the point is, is that people who are going to do this work are going to manifest the people to help them the most. I don't advertise. People show up in my inbox all day long for every aspect of this, and I'm honored, right? And I'm going to keep serving until I die, as long as I can, right? And right now, I'm actually working with people here in Western Mass. We're uh, creating um, essentially a Western Massachusetts Psychedelic Facilitators Guild. Uh, these are all sorts of people with all types of experience that are wanting to do this work with people. We want to create a center for people to actually come to. Uh, this is obviously when this is more in the you know in the positive legal eyes of the state laws here. So um, also with the federal laws and so forth, but. A lot of things are being planned, a lot of communities being built right now. Um, but people need to research, get out of the Facebook groups, also stop looking over the fence at other people's experiences that you're trying to mimic because it's going to set you up for a lot of disappointment. And that is a form of destination addiction that is very easy to get sucked into. Be careful. Watch out. What are you, what are you idealizing? I, I talk to people all the time. I need an ego death. Why? What's that going to do for you? Go through and do the work to, to check your ego yourself without the death, right? Let the mushrooms open you and let yourself let go to what, to experience what they're showing you, right? The, in the intention is to surrender <laughs> and listen to the message of the medicine, not your checklist from your therapist, your punch list of what you need to be working on because that's not something that we access in that space like a, like a menu or a drive through That's not possible. Mm-hmm. You can set intentions for lots of things, but it's not like that, right? So the understanding of what's true needs to come through more. Um, I've been so busy. I don't go online lately because I just don't have the time. I really don't have the time, but I know that speaking to these things is important, and I feel, even in this conversation, um, it's exciting to share these knowledges that I have gained and to even start with this, speaking of it in this space, because it's necessary, I feel more people talking about this because how else are people going to learn unless they're doing it and finding out for themselves so in lieu of that those of us who are doing that or have done that we have to speak right share truthfully what's going on here is an obligation right so well i know there's people i'm sure especially yeah. where you're from there's more of a mind expansive like, it's not looked at like a drug, like you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life for possessing it or using it or all this stuff. But there are no, some places <laughs> that are no. like that. And luckily, like, this episode can go to their iPhone or their Android and they can listen with headphones and they can feel safe to explore this type of Definitely. medicine. Definitely. Which is literally absolutely. why we're which here having this conversation. It's which absolutely is, yes. necessary and vital to have which these is conversations. Necessary. And for me yeah, to even yeah, yeah. admit, like, yeah, dude, I had some crazy trippy experiences back in the day. Like, thanks to shrooms, I realized I really didn't want to kill myself, but a part of myself did, you know? And yeah. when you well, think I share about, that same space with you. I'm in the same, right? Yeah. I come from that same place. I, I ultimately realized after not only just, like, psychedelic trips but meditation and a lot of journaling and shadow work and luckily I've looked back at a lot of my journals like for me and I can't speak on anybody else who has depression or suicide because we're all different like I just want to go home yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is like I love earth yeah. but I know earth isn't my home yeah. and I'm happy to be here I'm happy to have my husband and my daughter and the life that I live and all the whole human experience I think is beautiful as a whole but there is an aching in my soul and a calling and a pull that constantly does, if I don't monitor it, just takes me to another etheric place. And I miss home. And that's the best thing that I can say is like my soul, I, Cheyenne, and my soul, the authentic self, the part of the, you know, all that we're all connected to, really, really misses home. So it makes me wonder how long I've been away from home when you think of reincarnation and karma and life cycles and all of that. Yeah. And when the 3D world gets a little hard and it gets a little challenging, I'm just like, oh my God, am I going to think about this today? Like this is what brings on the ideation is like trying to get over this challenge. 
but I just, I try to face it head on and I'm, I'm not sitting here like, oh no, I'm not having these thoughts. I don't feel like this. I'm not pushing them down anymore. I'm like, today I don't feel so good and I've had thoughts of suicide and I'm not going to tell everybody. I'm not going to make a Facebook post, but me to me and my mirror work, I'm like, I see you and I recognize that you want to give up today and I want you to know we're not giving up today because mind, body, and spirit are here working together. There's so many things working with us that we don't even realize thanks to our sweet little human eyes. Um, but it's necessary for me to just understand where the ideation come from, how far back it started and why, you know, it continued even through the spiritual experience. For the people that obviously like idolize the ego death aspect, um, for me, it was really important to literally split the ego and the authentic self down the middle. Because obviously when you're unconscious, you don't realize you're operating from ego, yeah. any of that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Again, exactly. to have that awesome. experience and be like, oh my God, I've been operating as like a completely different false facade mask version of myself. And like... <laughs> The person that I've always been or obviously like all the things that I've enjoyed, this childlike feeling, if it makes my heart race and kind of like my fingers sweat, almost like a little bit of stage fright, like that, like that's your purpose. Yeah. That's what you're going towards. And it seems so simple, like looking at it, like reading it yeah. on a video or anything like that. You're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's so simple. But feeling for yourself, you're like, I've been so lost acting like yeah. I've been so found in the physical world, you know, masquerading with job titles and cars and 401ks and all of this stuff false that you obviously need. Validation. But extremely false validation. False validation. Um, even though yeah. we, none of us want to be homeless. I totally get that. But who I was, I was great. years it was ago. instrumental in my growth. Yeah, who I was years ago to who I am now. And I mean, like, I haven't yeah. even started the plant medicine part of the journey, so watch out. Um, I'll be documenting that because I won't even believe that transformation awesome. either. But yeah. to anybody listening, like, I cannot legally condone you to go try this. All I can say is if you listen to this and you feel called to this, there are people <clears throat> issue out there that can help you and facilitate and guide you and be there for even the moments afterwards where you're like, okay, my beliefs, I'm having like a paradigm shift. I've just quantum leaped through something. She's going to be there for you, not only during the journey and the experience, but also afterwards. And she's going to continue to guide you as long as you obviously want her there. So I wish that I could interview so many more people that are doing this so people can understand the community of people that are called to serve yeah. humanity in such a greater form. And it probably does yeah. look like woo woo and cuckoo to people that are just doing their thing. But I think it is so important that you said not everybody is here to wake up. And that's so freaking true. That's absolutely true. But that's beautiful too though. And that's so, there's something about that that's so raw and so real. We deserve to also honor those people and it's not about, oh, you know what, you're not good enough if you're not doing psychedelics. It's not going to be like that. It's some people are here to help and some people are just here to be. Yeah. And maybe they don't want to evolve. Maybe they don't want to do any work. Maybe they just want to be here and just do their thing. Whatever that is, they're entitled to their life. And if it's miserable, send them on the way with love and compassion. That's all you can do. right? Or love them if they're in your circle and you love them with love. You, you accept them with love and compassion right? as they are. And you do your work, right? You stay in your lane. And if people are coming to you, then show up. And if you are someone who is fortunate and honored enough for a lot of people to come to you, keep showing up, right? And continue to do this work, right? When more people show up and are asking more of me, what that tells me is that that's my time to really dig into my self-care and to honor myself and to start really digging into my passions and what drives my heart and what fills me just being in my house i am home though see i'm home right here in this 3d dream house right okay i know it's a bunch of it is what it is it's the matrix right but for me i feel i feel honored to have a place that's safe 
to do what I'm doing with other people and to evolve into the person that I need to be to continue to do this in a way that is sustainable and helpful to not just myself, because it's not even about me, it's about other people also doing this, right? So how can I show up for other people too, to help them become confident to go and sit with people for hours on end and help them unpack psychedelic mysteries, psychedelic songs of their, you know, songs of their people, so to speak, right? Like, this is the work that is going to help people to come into their peace and their joy and their authentic selves, right? So we have to do that ourselves before we can help them. A piece of paper is not that privilege, right? Mm -hmm. You have to break wide open a few times, as you have experienced, to understand what this even looks and sounds like, right? So... Yeah, it's a big deal. Pay attention to the way you want to do this and why you want to do this. If it's a pull to you, where is it coming from? Here or here or your gut, right? Like if it's this area down here, continue on. But if it's from here, watch out for that. Ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. Is that important? You might get more than you bargained for. So be careful. This is not a toy. This is not a game. When your mind opens and you lose your identity and you can't eat anything but salmon and Brussels sprouts for a full year because you don't even know who you are, that's not a game. And that messes with you. And I'm still trying to do the work around that. I can't even watch football anymore. I can't even watch the sports I used to watch because they don't matter. They don't make sense anymore. Why would you do that? <laughs> What's the point? It hurts my soul to watch the waste of money now. So this is, in some ways it enhanced me, in some ways it kind of ruins my life the way I used to have my asleep unaware life right like i I don't do the things i used to do we need to talk about this because you are absolutely correct there are so many things that i used to enjoy that i have tried to go back in and enjoy and i'm like motherfucker this is a Mm -mm. waste of time i do not buy that's done can't even sitting and watching yeah tv for hours on end there was like a grieving process to all of these different experiences i used to love and I was like, yeah, I have to give myself time to grieve yeah. this because I'm not going to come back to this. I, I only have my memories now. I didn't even know I was leaving, you know? I didn't know that I wasn't going to go away That's from so this well one said. more time. That right there, of this whole conversation, <laughs> that one thing is so, that's like solid gold right there, what you just said. Because that is the, that's the epitome of what this is like when you're not seeking it. And we don't even know what it is. Like when you just fall into this and it blows you wide open, you don't realize that what you're going through is you're definitely saying goodbye to a big portion of who you've known yourself to be for your life. In my case, I'm 53. I did this work. I was 48 years old. I was beginning. So, um, when I was 49 years old, I was saying goodbye to the life of the person that I've known forever. And that was incredibly, and still is and can be incredibly painful. But I wouldn't trade it for anything because I would actually help people. I have something to give back. And I'm not just taking, and I'm not super selfish and gross anymore. I'm able to be in the world in service everywhere I go. See, this, this work isn't even about guiding mushroom journeys. It's about showing up and being of service everywhere you go, day in and day out. doesn't matter where you go. How can you show up? How can you be better, right? In that space of other people, what can you do? Can you be of assistance to somebody? Is someone needing help? Are they actually, do you feel someone is needing this work? So many times I feel people, I hand them a card because I feel it, and they just, oh, my God, I was talking to my friend about this over lunch two hours ago. And they freak out. They freak out. But I'm standing there at the checkout or wherever I am at, and I feel just enough of a little pull. And I'm like, okay, here we go. This needs to, apparently, this needs to go to you. This belongs to you. And they're like, what do you mean? What's this? What? Psychedelic mushrooms. Oh, oh. And they just start to get, like, they're like, they've manifested mm-hmm. what they need right there on the spot. And so this is in my day. This is what it looks like. It's not just mushroom guiding, it's in the world you are, you become an um, advocate for this you become a source for this right and you get to for every, serve every humanity. Level. what's that you get to serve humanity you get to serve their hearts that's everywhere my everywhere it. you go that's the way the whole way everywhere you go it's meant for you to show up it's meant for you to be um helping other people understand right 
You have to make sense of what's coming through for them, why it's hard, right? And if it's for them even to go through this path, maybe it's just meant to accept, forgive, and just be yourself, right? That's mm. okay too. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I <laughs> must say, I really want to come visit you and hang out. Even if we don't do mushrooms, well, even if we don't journey, that's fine. Tea. I just, I even love if tea, we just so have come tea and have tea talk, with me. <laughs> I would just, you yeah, are just such an absolute bright light and you've truly inspired me in this episode. And I encourage you to come back and share more of your advocacy work. Absolutely. Spreading the happy. Let's pick topics. Yes. Yeah, I would happily do that with you anytime. Or if you want to have guests, multiple guests speaking about one topic, I would absolutely do that too to share Ooh, like yeah. cross-platform experiences. Just something that I'll plant a new seed in your head about. There's probably other people that are doing similar types of work, mm -hmm. and I would be happy to sit on a panel for talks about discussing psychedelic whatever or whatever topics you think I would be a, a, a good fit for. I would be honored <sighs> to do that, so let me know. Yeah. Mishu, I love you. Absolutely. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say oh, it right shit. now. I'm not going to close my heart. I just oh, absolutely oh, love you. That's excellent. Well, we're here to do this for each other. We're here to help each other. You are doing beautiful podcasts. You have a very articulate and very clear way of speaking, and you're very intelligent, you're very aware, and it's all the combination of that is very useful for people that are trying to understand this. So thank you for coming clearly across in such a really good way. Yeah, it's an honor to, to know you and to be part of this. Thank with you. you. So thank you. Thank and you so much. Do you, should I tell people where to find me or do you Absolutely. put something on the screen? So yes, down below, yeah. y'all know, if you hit the description, you're going to find all of her links below. But I mean, for anybody driving that's just curious, go ahead and shout out your website or your Facebook or where you would like people to directly contact you to get um, more information from you. You can go to my website. There's actually quite a... a there's a couple links that will send you to um, also my third wave facilitator page, which has a lot of reviews on it from people that I'm working with actively and very, very recently up to, I think the most recent one was from two weeks ago. Um, but you're welcome to go on my website. There's more of my story, my, my, my back end story of my trials and tribulations. Um, there's definitely more of uh, information online. You can put my name into Google, just Mishu Oliveira and search for more podcasts and articles that I've contributed to to understand more of kind of the advocacy work I do with mushrooms and the, also the kind of decrim localized, uh, more prioritized criminalization of entheogens around Massachusetts. I've done work with that. But my information is out there. Reach out if any of this inspires you or resonates with you. Literally reach out anyway. Um, my information is out there and don't be a stranger. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything today. Thank you, Cheyenne. You're so You're very welcome. Hope you have a great rest of your day. I will. But you hang on. I have music to show our friends before we get out of here. Guys, I just recently went to uh, Dirty Heads. So it was Yellow Wolf and Dirty Heads and Tropidelic. And if there was somebody else, oh, there was another band and I can't think of it right now. I hate myself for it. I'm so sorry. Anyways, I have a clip of Dirty Heads from Grinders at KC. We're going to listen to a little bit of Heavy Waters for any of you just kind of need to soak up those good vibes. Head over and check out Dirty Heads' new album, Island Glow. Well, you see madness, I am the center. I'm only happy in the summer. Fuck the world. Shout out. Come heavy water. This is the Hoosier Media Network, your home for podcasting.